Hi everyone and welcome back to the workshop. So I thought for today's video what we will do is to continue with the plasma up stands that we made in the previous video. But although this is also plasma up stands, these ones are actually, it's a one-off and it's a unique design and they're significantly bigger than the ones we made in the previous video. Now, because it's a custom design, I thought, well, we'll just go bells and whistles. And I ordered a big piece of aluminium. Now, it is still C250 and it's still uh, 20 millimeters thick. However, this piece of stock is actually 1.2 meters long and 630 millimeters wide. And what I decided to do as well as instead of just taking the tool paths and copying and pasting them and reassigning them to different features on this job is to actually experiment a little bit with other tool paths and tooling strategies and part of the reason for that is that I am really still finding my feet with the executive this is the first time that I'm machining something so big or my stock in any case so big and the components so big two of them so I'm really trying to see how far I can go. I'm trying, still trying to define what is the best tooling strategies, uh, finishing strategies to get good surface finishes. Now, I tried my best to draw the layout of the actual two upstands that we're going to manufacture. As you can, you might not see, I'll just highlight it in a different way. And as you also see, it's not taking up all of the stock. There's a little bit left at the bottom and towards the, towards the end. But these spare sections will still be taken. I will still I will still machine different components for this machine. So nothing is going to go for a waste. This stock is obviously this piece of aluminium is close to 900 euros. So I unfortunately I'm not going to spend time talking during the video. I will once again document everything um, video wise. Um, I will also have chapters in the description of the video below if you want to jump to specific sections Let's say maybe the adaptive clearing for these paths or the actual profile cutting or the drilling. There's a lot of drilling involved here um, You can jump to that and I'll have the, the links or in the description below to the certain chapters But what I'll do like I did in the previous video is towards the end of the video I'll have the finished components and I'll talk about it and I'll say what I've learned, um, what I think I can change in the future concerning the toolpaths. You know, then just, just a general overview of um, how it went. Then just a side note, actually something I've just been thinking of now is I, I'm using something like 11 tools during this operation and a lot of them can actually be narrowed down. I can maybe get away with, with maybe six, there's four different holes. But I really want to try and use different tooling and see how it performs in the 20 millimeter aluminium. And it's because that's basically all I machine is, is anything, as I said in my previous videos, is aluminium from 10 millimeters all the way to 25. But 20 millimeters, 15 and 20 would be the most popular that, that I actually machine. So I really want to nail down how to best use this executive machine to, to get that done efficiently. Um, so I hope you join me in this video. I will see you at the end where we have a chat about how it all went. And there's going to be chips everywhere, but it will still be fun. And I will see you towards the end. Thank you so much.
So everybody, there we have it. And I think as you might notice, I didn't get a lot of footage and it's because this job was really challenging for me. And it was like that from the very beginning. Now, I don't want to, I don't want to dwell too much on the challenges or neg of negative aspect of this job, um, but I do want to talk about it so I can make mental notes of it and maybe you learn something as well. Now, before I get to that, I want to talk about the positive takeaway, which is actually more important for me. And it's the fact that the exec is starting to perform extremely well. I am so, so pleased with the floor finishes I got from this job. The profile cuts are so smooth and it's nearly on par with what I get from the symbiosis, which is obviously it's a smaller and stiffer machine, um, but the exec is nearly, nearly on par. I think maybe two or three more jobs and I'll, ha I'll have it about on exactly the same level that I get from the symbiosis. Um, so that's the positive takeaway um, for me. Um, I'm very pleased with the machining. The more challenging portion of this job is the fact that I had problems from the very beginning and it started off with that unruly piece of stock. Now I told you it is 1.2 meters long by 630 millimeters wide um, by 20 millimeters. And after I made the introduction video, I actually weighed it and that piece of stock is, was 48 kilos. So at that size, it's quite unruly to manage to lift on, um, to put down. Uh, I had the tape on both sides, I had the activator and the super glue and that, that was all fine and, and dandy. But then I had to maneuver it by myself onto this actual bed. I had to align it and that was the beginning of the end. Then I got to the actual machining and I started off with the actual adaptive clearing on these four pockets. And what I would normally do is I remove this plastic protective sheet from the aluminium, especially when I have uh, a pockets where I'll do either a, a normal pocket operation or adaptive clearing. Now for the sake of the video, I decided to do adaptive clearing because it's just more interesting. And what I should have done is to remove this plastic cover here, especially in these sections, because what happens when it starts to machine, it doesn't cut it off completely. So you have this plastic flapping in, in the wind and then the chips can't evacuate properly. And the second problem I have or had is the fact that I only have one fork buster nozzle. On symbiosis, I have two and I had only one and the air from this was just never going to be enough to handle the chips that's being generated from the adaptive clearing. And so just that you know, I had full depth of cut with a, a 10 millimeter tool end mill, two flute, and I was doing a one millimeter step over at two and a half thousand um, millimeters per minute. So it was quite aggressive and the air just was never gonna handle the evacuation. So I had to do a manual, um, a manual air blast as well from the side. And it's there where I realized um, I have to decide between getting a lot of footage or um, doing this job properly. Now, unfortunately, these two uprights is, is about 300 euros each if you take the whole piece of stock was nearly 900 euros. So I was not going to sacrifice the, the actual job for getting footage. The second problem I encountered, um, I had 10 tool changes in total um, and I only have four tool holders. Now, I do have more tool holders on order, but unfortunately there's a supply issue all over the world and I don't have them, I don't have them currently, so I had to make do with the four tools holders that I have. Um, you know, and, and then when I made these, I, I didn't even talk about these, these are the actual stiffness, and you have these, these corners, you know, it's small little things like offcuts like this that flies around, um, you have to counter for this. So what I normally do is I leave a one millimeter uh, floor at the bottom and I'll just break this off and finish the tool path. So you see it's all these small little things that is a constant thing that you have to think about, think about and it, it engages your mind so much that you just can't focus on or think of how you're going to do a shot from a video perspective. So I just had to do a mental switch and say well at this stage the actual finished product is more important for me. So that's about the job. I, as I said in the beginning, you know, I'm going to take the positives away from here because I am really, really over the moon by 
the finishes I'm starting to get. I will do a bit of B-roll um, um, at the end of this video so you can see how it looks. This is very smooth. And that is what I'm going to take with me this job. You know, we can look at something and say, well, it was difficult, but I choose to see the positives out of this. Um, we're always going to have challenges, but I'm going to take the positives, the fact that this machine did the job exactly the way I wanted. And I'm really pleased about that. So hopefully you've learned something. Um, in the next job, we'll definitely make something else. And I'm sure it's going to go well then. But until next time, thank you so very much for watching this video. Until then.